Here's the here's my here's my point. Mm. Most people hate the idea of a big Australia. First of all, let's talk about the advantages. We'll get into dis- disadvantages, which Jordan will cover. Talk in it, uh, but like okay, Augusta. first of all, what that gives us a big Australia. Look, either way, the first point is you want it or not, it's going to happen anyways. Like it's not going to be as big as like Kevin Rudd might have wanted it, but by 2050. We're estimated to have a population of around 32 to 35 million. <clears throat> you, if you don't do anything right now, that's where we're going to possibly hit at. Unless, you know, there's some serious, like, one nation comes into power and they completely... Just the way things are going, irrespective, labor or liberal, that's where we're going to ha- end up with. Um, so, this is the problem. Th- these are the advantages that you get from a bigger country. First of all, uh, infrastructure cost is going to dramatically reduce. The reason why like uh, roads and, and train lines between like Darwin to like, I don't know, wherever in, in that sort of territory is expensive is because there's so many people that are gonna be eventually on it. The more people you have, the, uh, the, the economies of scale suggest that everything is gonna be cheaper. That's why Australia, uh, America can build a lot more infrastructure than we can. They have, Things like your delivery cost. It's a hassle for Australia Post to deliver something like, because I do merchandise for Jordan. So it's, uh, the delivery costs are insane. It's off the hook. And it's because it costs a lot of money for me to send a bullshit shirt like, (laughs) yeah. On sale now. (laughs) Take it off. On sale, whatever camera. Yes, it Dance. takes a lot of money. He was thinking about that all day. Yeah, no, I wasn't. He tapping. So it takes that a lot of money. The moment, damn. To like. get the to get like a shirt to I don't know somewhere in South Australia. It's because it, it costs a lot of money. Like there's only a very handful of people that live in those areas. So, but if there were a lot more people living there, then everything would be cheaper. Secondly, we wouldn't have to depend on international markets all the time. Australia has a big economic problem that um, we're too dependent on only a certain section of, uh, of our economy, which is commodity export. It's kind of like, like, just look at Saudi Arabia and what they've, they're going through now. Oil prices crash, their economy crashes. They just had, these are the same yeah. people that could literally buy whatever the hell they wanted, and now they're in a position where they're like, shit, we're looking at like being poor after 20 years. <sighs> Things change. Uh, maybe there isn't a commo- like coal, for instance. People, countries are not going to buy coal the same way that they were because with alternative energy, it's going to be the, the the demand is going to reduce. So we're vulnerable right now. What we don't have is a big enough economy or a big enough consumer base to just depend on our own, own economy. Like if no one else is going to buy our shit, there's enough people within our own country that will buy it. That's why like countries like China and the U.S., even England. Uh, UK are very safe. They have a strong enough consumer base to depend on. So that's one of the advantages that you get. <coughs> Actually, in a way, a big Australia means that you will truly be sovereign because you're not too obsessed with what. And in this po- post-COVID economy, we should probably look into like being more self-reliant. De- uh, Thirdly, it can spur economic growth immensely, irrespective of like that advantage of consumer base. That's the way we can get out of because. Um, with more people, there's more people that are providing. Uh, where, look, boomers are eventually moving towards a, a point where they're going to rely on pensions. There's not enough base to be able to provide that, and they deserve it. They did it for their own, uh, the golden generation. There's there's Mate. huge there's there's a big number of them that are going to depend on a fewer people now because it just turns out that our generation is smaller in number. So that's what again. A advantage. Um, the problem is no one wants people on top of each other. The way that we have done our infrastructure in Australia is we haven't been able to match with our, uh, our population growth. Like we just, like, and I'll talk about like Sydney. We just keep spreading out into the western suburbs. We'll eventually reach a point where like Ooh. it takes three hours for you to get to your work. And um, so you don't want that. But what what you can, but what you really want is people moving into regional areas. Um, that would be amazing. We would l- literally offer immigration if people were willing to do it. Problem is, once they end up finishing their whatever time period that they have to, they move to Sydney. Move to Sydney. <clears throat> There's a few ways to do it. One is a method that I don't agree with, but I'll just put it out there. It's kind of like what the, what the UAE has, that 
There's a certain amount of people that will never become citizens. They're not eligible for citizenship. It's not that they're exploited. They can, um, they work here. They have all the sort of benefits, but they can never, not benefits of like unemployment, but they can, but they can never be citizens. That gives a cushion that if things go south and we don't kind of want them, we can always tell them to fuck off. I don't necessarily agree with that because it's just a two-tier system. But here's another one. When uh, Deng Xiaoping came into power in China, he, he had this problem of um, how does he make sure he wanted to open up the economy, but his system was such that the, it wasn't possible. So he set up something called special economic zones, where he said, in these particular areas, Chinese laws of like, you know, taxing a lot or whatever uh, don't apply. So you can, you basically pay zero taxes here or very little taxes and you can invest as much as possible. Those free economic zones now are um, world centers for manufacturing. They're huge economic areas. Mm. Australia could look into something like that. What if we said that this particular regional town in South Australia, if you set up your shop over there, you have to pay zero taxes. And if as soon as like you get out of there, then you have to pay taxes. Isn't that a very conservative, like a liberal idea? Yeah, I mean, it could be, but I think it's, no. it's not a bad idea. I mean, no, 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 it, it is a liberal idea because moving towards a more uh, free economy. But I'm saying this is, the, this is one way you can incentivize investment into areas that no one is looking into. That, well, here's another one. Why don't you just force them to live there? Well, that's the, the, the that's like a problem. So you, you can't. Okay, so technically, as I like the idea of you're not a citizen, but you can work there. I know you do, but <laughs> but the problem with that is yeah. that um, yeah, you can never be a citizen because our constitution like guarantees certain rights, and that's also movement. You can't. So you would basically never have to make them citizens. Yeah, but I reckon that this is going to be one of those rare instances where if you take that to a referendum, people are voting yes. <laughs> you will be able to change that. I think you'd be surprised. People would not vote for. Uh, but, maybe. Maybe I'm wrong, but, but, that like is, but I that have, is an interesting equality idea. is a very entrenched part of like, and you're gonna love this Anglo-Saxon culture. I think that that sort of <laughs> I'm gonna, it's not. Um, I don't think they'll be like okay with having second-tier citizens in their own country, even if that means that they're not part of it. Um, but again, you can look into no, that. Well, I'm I don't not know. Maybe we can soften the deal on the referendum where you can get everyone who is a, an actual citizen gets to wear those sweet long flowing shirts that Saudi Arabian <laughs> dudes wear and they get a free to indicate that they are citizens. <laughs> what did you, I don't, because I wasn't here. What was the public perception and opinion of the, um, the, the Peter Costello um, uh, baby bonus scheme? Probably awesome if you had a baby. Other than that, nobody would care or notice, but it was, you know, it was objectively stupid policy, but I don't but know. But why do you think like, it was stupid? Because it didn't work. That's, That's the first point. Yeah, okay. it's, it's, it was just, it was middle class welfare, handing things out to people that are either going to have babies or they're not going to have babies. Didn't incentivize people. Nobody's, nobody, unless you are really dumb, as in all your male children have rats' tails, is going to be like, fuck yeah, 500 bucks. Hmm. That's a reason to bring someone into the world. Well, there's worse. It's really. not like, yeah, yeah but, it's just really like, but it would help. Is it in the money plan? <laughs> <laughs> if you have a baby. <laughs> <laughs> Try for the baby bonus, but be quick. I understand that, but that's going to ease a lot of tensions amongst Australians that don't want to, you know, be surrounded by people from different countries. Eh? Well, what's your rebuttal? Rebut, damn it. Oh. Unless I can, you, I, you well, done? I, I, I can't remember the exact points of yeah. it, but I'll just put these out. First of all, the ecological strain. Australia doesn't have much water. Um, you could obviously put desalination plants into it, but that has its own environmental problems. The second one is, look at all the countries that have a lot of people in them. They all suck. I don't want to live in any of Such them. Such as? Or the States? Let's just look at, go through it. Yeah, the United States. Oh, well, that's a huge step up from Australia. Like, slightly more burger change, but everybody <laughs> in those burger changes is really scared of losing their jobs. And oh, why is one of the reasons that they're able to, they're so scared of losing their jobs? is because there is just this ample population being like, I'll take it. I can wear the little burger sign. I can just do a little dance oh. on the highway. Like, th that's a huge problem of it. But then the other one is... Um, 
When it comes to infrastructure and building it, yeah, you can build a lot of infrastructure. Technically, you can, but it's like America. I guess they build more infrastructure than we do. That's very true. But they also build worse infrastructure. And it depends on who's in government, mm. which is also what happened in Australia. Because as soon as they doubled up the immigration in this country, the Liberals halved the amount of infrastructure spending. So you have yes. the worst of both worlds. And so it's just the same argument where it comes into nuclear technology as well, right? Where it's just like, yeah, if there was all these sick regulations on it, uh, nothing would happen. And then, like, you know, the waste would just be properly disposed and it's just like yeah that's all well and good even though it's not but like let's just assume that it all is good that is assuming that the government of the day are not going to be corrupt and do all these little backhand deals with the people that they are like got them into power so that they can cut corners and profit off it right like the reason that they doubled the immigration in this country is because coals exist 